back to the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. We're catching up with New Japan Pro Wrestling's Road to Wrestling Don Taku. That's coming up next weekend, the big Don Taku show. But the Road to show had a bunch of big matches on it as well. We're going to cover some of the big highlights that happened over the last week. And before we get into that, though, I want to remind you guys that I've always got free stuff for you. You can check that in the description box if you like free money. And who doesn't like free money? But if you like free money, uh, I, I'm always involved in investments, money, trying to get your savings up, trying to get your investments up. So there are some free stocks offered from Robinhood and Webull down in the description box below. You can also get a ledger if you are uh, someone who has some crypto and you're worried about leaving your crypto on some of these online platforms, which I don't do anymore. Uh, all of my stuff's on the ledger, so you can get a discount and uh, use the link down below to get yourself a ledger to move your crypto onto there so it's safe and secure and not subject to some bank failing and then you losing all your money. So check out those links down in the description box below. But let's talk about what's been going on in New Japan. Um, some of the undercard things that have been happening for those of you who haven't been following uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, there is a never open weight six man tag team match coming up at Wrestling and Dontaku where Okada has now entered into that division and he was going to have two mystery partners to take on Strong Style, which of course is Minoru Suzuki, Desperado, El Desperado, and the son of Strong Style. Uh, a lot of speculation was as to who Okada's uh, partners were going to be. Tomohiro Ishii has, has stepped up to be one of Okada's partners, but there is one that's left out. Now, the thought is that it's probably going to be Hiroshi Tanahashi. Tanahashi right now has is uh, suffering from a rib injury that he suffered at DC uh, at that tag match where Aussie Open won the strong tag team championships. So Tanahashi, tentatively, he may or may not be on the show. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it winds up being Tanahashi in the end. There are other guys on the roster they can fill in in that spot. I don't think it's going to be some big super surprise about who's going to be in that spot. Although, <laughs> it would be funny if uh, Kiyomiya was in that spot. I would, I would laugh if that happened, but that's not going to happen. But uh, that's going on in the undercard. We also have Hontai with uh, Tama Tonga and Hikaleyu, who are going up against the Rebel Club, Bullet Club version, uh, David Finley and Kenta, and some championship matches going on there. There's a lot of stuff happening there, but that seems to be pretty standard fare right now. Still haven't heard from El Phantasmo. He hasn't showed up since he got booted at Sakura Genesis from Bullet Club. I'm expecting him to some point in some time going to make his return and do something against David Finley or Kenta or Taiji Ishimori. Uh, who all ganged up on him. But there's a lot more to talk about Bullet Club. I've done some Bullet Club videos. There's another Bullet Club video I might do in about a month. I want to see how this tour ends and then kind of give my thoughts on it because we're going to be heading towards the G1 eventually uh, in the next couple of months. And it's going to be some some curious matchups that they could possibly do in some of the blocks for uh, depending on how the block structure is. But as far as the road to shows there were a couple big matches that were really catching my attention some of them not so much um but i will say overall the road to has been a little underwhelming uh the first three months january february march new japan seemed like they were back to you know they were getting back to where they were they were kind of on fire the crowds were excited and everything else there were some interesting changes fashions getting changed up people changing things here and there this tour seems a little lukewarm and maybe part of it has to do with the fact that they are performing in front of crowds that are still doing the clap wrestling thing and they're not vocalizing like they were in january and february and march that also might just be the crowds just might not be into the storylines that are going on right now one of the interesting things coming out of this is a, a special singles match one-on-one -on -one, tetsuya naito taking on doki doki has been really going after Naito in a lot of these uh, multi-man tag matches and this ongoing kind of competitive rivalry. It's not really a blood rivalry between just five guys in Los Ingobernables de Japón. It really feels like the tone of this is that just five guys are trying to take the place of LIJ in New Japan. The way they operate, the way they function is very similar. You know, and again, it's just five guys, LIJ, had always been like five, maybe six guys at a time in the faction. So it's a natural, obviously with Sonata defecting over to just five guys, it's a natural rivalry there, but it's not a blood feud. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but uh, Naito clowning Doki for a lot of this match, but Doki came in 
attacked Naito from the jump. He was really trying to win this match, and I saw so much urgency in Doki, but you know, this is Tetsuya Naito. Naito's not losing to Doki, so Naito does get the win with a Destino after about 15 minutes. We then had probably one of the better matches this past week on the tour, the Junior Tag Team Championship match with Catch-22 taking on the team of Kevin Knight and Kushida. Uh, Kevin Knight, if you're not familiar, it's from the Shibata's Dojo. Uh, him and Kushida done, have done some stuff on Impact. They've shown that here. Uh, this match was a lot of fun. Uh, Knight is still very green now. Um, so that does show a lot in this match here and there, but that kid, his leaping, if you haven't seen this guy, his leaping ability is insane. Just like the hops, the springs in it, this guy literally has springs for legs, leaping in the air, jumping over barricades, flying all over the place. And he's a very tall, lanky guy. So it, it did provide an interesting matchup for catch two, two. Um, at some point in this match, uh, TJP got busted open over uh, his eye, and um, it was hard to see where the spot went to try to see what, when that happened, but he was bleeding pretty badly in this match, which just kind of added to the match. The crowd really got into this match. Surprisingly enough, I thought uh, Catch 2-2 two -Two was going to win this match several times, but no, it was Kishida and Kevin Knight. They are your new IWGP Tag Team Champions. Uh, defeating one of the best tag teams, period, junior or heavyweight, uh, that I feel are in the world right now with uh, Ac Francesco Akira and TJP. But I have a feeling that they probably will be winning those tag titles back, uh, if not at Dominion at some point in time in the future. I don't think Kishida and Kevin Knight are going to be a long-term uh, IWGP junior tag team champions. But that was a match I definitely do recommend you guys checking that one out. The main event on this night was, however, for the junior he heavyweight championship singles. Hiromo Takahashi is defending against Kenamaro. Now, again, this is the continuation of this Just Five Guys LIJ rivalry. And Hiromu is challenged Sonata at Wrestling Dontaku in the main event for the IWGP Championship, World Heavyweight Championship. So it's the junior champion challenging the World Heavyweight Champion. But Kenamaro, of course, said that, look, you got to defend against me. New Japan seems to remember that Ken Amaro actually, you know, several years ago in other promotions was a really good wrestler and they decided to utilize that here. And that was a good decision. This match went just over 30 minutes and you really got to see what a technician Ken Amaro is in this match. And you really got to see what a good seller Hiromu is in this match. They both of them were going after each other's legs early on, but it was Hiromu and that, and that kind of contest, Ken Amaro is going to win every single time. He was just trying to rip literally rip Hiromu's leg off uh going for the figure four time and time again and Hiromu would counter Hiromu would you know trying to get out of moves knowing full well that if Kenamaru hits one more move on that leg or one more move for a brain buster that he's going to lose this match and you see uh, Hiromu is literally struggling to not get beat in this match over and over and over again. Kenamaro finally gets, I thought the match was over when Kenamaro got the figure four on and it looked like Hiromu tried to go to the ropes. He got pulled back. Hiromu was about to tap and like there was no, there was no recourse there. Hiromu did manage to get out and then squeaked, squeaked out a victory here. Did get the win with Time Bomb 2 on Kenamaro, which was surprised me because I thought Kenamaro was going to win this match. Uh, but I definitely want to see Kenamaro in a lot more matches for the junior heavyweight championship. I, I Again, I thought he was going to win this match. Um, I don't think it's too out of question to say that he might wind up being the IWGP junior heavyweight champion at some point in the future. Maybe he could win best of the super juniors. Speaking of best of the super juniors, we did get the field announced for best of the super juniors this year. Now, this is where things were very disappointing for me. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what the behind the scenes stuff is with this because last year's Best of the Super Juniors, we got a lot of new faces. Um, a lot of people, Ace Austin obviously was a big standout last year. A couple other guys who were new. Wheeler Yuta from AEW was in it last year. And this year we're seeing the entrance and I'm waiting to see some names pop up. And we did get some good names that are new first time Best of the Super Juniors participates. But yeah, there is no Ace Austin this year. There is no Wheeler Yuta. In fact, there isn't anybody from AEW, which I'm really surprised at because I figure there are a lot of guys in AEW who would definitely benefit from being in a Best of the Super Juniors tournament. And I don't know if it's just that New Japan isn't going to be paying enough to for some of those guys to go over to Japan for a month to do this tournament or whatever the reason is. But 
Um, Kevin Kelly even mentioned that there were a lot of guys who wanted to be in a tournament that didn't make the cut for some reason or not. We have Ryusuke Taguchi in this tournament. We don't need Taguchi in this tournament. No, no offense to Taguchi, but he's not going to win. We all know he's not going to win. He's just, I don't really care for him showing his ass or whatever. And, you know, and then the two or three matches he actually tries in. I'm not really interested in that. I'd rather have seen some other guys because the cool thing about last year's Best of the Super Juniors is they had guys from all over the place. You had Impact guys, AEW guys, guys from Mexico, people from the UK, all converging on the Best of the Super Juniors, people from other promotions. We don't have too many guys from other promotions. No Noah guys in here. Uh, no DDT people in here. No, it, it's a lot of the usual suspects. And then the new guys we have in here, Leo Rush, is in here which is pretty cool which we all expected leo rush to be in here kushida is returning to the best of the super juniors now that he's back in new japan there was a lot of question whether or not kushida would be in this tournament he really doesn't need to be in the tournament he's won it multiple times uh but he's going to add his his star power to this uh speedball mike bailey that's one of the ones i was really excited to see he, him in for his first time in the best of the super juniors kevin knight of course uh now currently one half of the iwgp tag team champ junior tag team champions and dan maloney who i don't know very much about but i am going to have to now do my research and watch some of his matches before best of the super junior starts um but yeah like i said not a lot of guys from other promotions not a lot of guys from other japanese promotions nobody from aew i was again disappointed in this and i don't know the reason for it uh but i think it it hampers the tournament which it seems like they regressed because last year again like i said there was a lot of cool names in there and they didn't even get a lot of those guys to come back in so i don't know um we'll we'll see uh how the best of the super juniors shapes up but right now i have to say the lineup i'm a little bit underwhelmed from what i was it may have been my personal expectations based off of last year based off the fact that the travel restrictions have been lifted that they didn't get more guys from outside of the promotion in this tournament and we have a lot of guys who are in new japan who really don't need to be in this tournament uh in this tournament so it really doesn't feel like the best of the super juniors Wrestling Satsuma no Kuni, which I can always have a hard time pronouncing the name of this event. That happened uh, on Saturday. This was another one of the shows that were continuing some of the undercard feuds, but we did have two big title matches on the night. And this, this night had one of my favorite matches of the year. I'm going to get, and surprisingly, one of my favorite matches of the year is a year. I'm going to get to that. Um, I would do want to make one note about the, this new crop of young lions we've got oleg and oscar uh they, they, these two boys <laughs> one of a, uh, oscar is like six seven like you can already see like the potential matchup with him and hikaleu in the future that's definitely going to happen uh if both of them stay healthy and stay in new japan and a lot of people are already co uh, comparing oleg to a uh, new japan version of brock lesnar that dude he's got the credentials he's got the size he's got the look uh he, he he's gonna be a big star um, all things considered, but I just wanted to touch on that. And, you know, plus with Fujita and a bunch of the other, the young lions that they've got right now, it's, they, the future is bright with those guys coming up. But the main thing about this night is that you had the IWGP tag team championships on the line, Aussie open versus TMDK and a battle of the Aussies, uh, TMDK, one of the original Aussie tag teams that got a lot of noting, uh, Aussie Open's kind of leapfrogged them, uh, being now double champions in New Japan and being considered one of the best tag teams in the world. I was really looking forward to this match. I will say I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, the match for two thirds of it was really good, but then that last third, there was a storyline in the match and they kind of just threw it away in the last five to seven minutes and it just became literally a spot fest. And I usually, I've never been a big fan of spot fest. Uh, this and I'm not meaning high spot fest. They weren't really flying everywhere. They were just kind of like, all right, we're gonna do a spot, and then you do a spot, and then you do a spot, and then we're gonna reverse the spot into this other spot. And they were doing a lot of that, and there was no tagging going on. It went on for so long that at a certain point, I kind of they they one team would do a move on one of the members of the other team, and I'd be like, oh, go for the pin. Oh wait, that guy's not legal. So, I, you know, it got a little confusing after a while. Um, and the drama that they had built up during the match of working over certain body parts all just kind of flew out the window because nobody was, everybody was just flying around doing stuff. 
um, at, at certain points in the match, and this might be a camera work thing, you could definitely see TMDK and Aussie Open calling spots to each other and telling each other, oh, yeah, you ready to go? You want to do this? Hey, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you could see that uh, on camera, and it kind of took me out of the match a little bit. Uh, the match ended with just basically a war of attrition, who would hit the last big move and get the pin, and it was Aussie Open successfully defending their tag titles. Um, not quite my cup of tea. I wanted to see something a little bit more, a little bit more of a traditional tag match, and maybe the last one minute of the match, them just go balls to the wall. But essentially, this is kind of a Texas Tornado tag match. The tag team aspect of it just went out the window. I don't mean to throw shade on this match too much because I think these teams are great, but I just wanted... It's not the match that I wanted to see. I, personally, I wanted to see from them. In the main event, it is Tai Chi versus Shingo Takagi for the King of Pro Wrestling Championship. Now, sometimes these King of Pro Wrestling match stipulations work, and sometimes they don't. In this case, for me, it worked. So essentially, the stipulation is, and this time, you the winner of the match has to get three decisions, three different decisions. So you need to get a pinfall, and a count and or a count out and or a knockout and or a disqualification well they don't have dqs and or a tap out in order to win the match so i really like the dynamic because that you can see the strategy over the 40 plus minutes this match went on how these guys changed their strategy uh both of them went for pinfalls early uh shingo scores a pinfall about the 10 minute mark Tai Chi gets one about the 15 minute mark and then you could see how they switched up to try to knock each other out to try to go for submissions to try to go for count outs there's a critical error that Shingo makes during this match though he could have gotten a count out on Tai Chi when he was outside the ring but he threw Tai Chi back into the ring and didn't get the count out which the crowd applauded but it was a critical mistake for Shingo and the funny thing about this the, again the friendly the kind of competitive rivalry between just five guys and LIJ is LIJ when Sonata defected most of them were like you know it's LIJ they're like yeah whatever because that's their attitude except for Shingo because when Shingo found out that Sonata was going to join with Tai Chi well Shingo don't like Tai Chi he's like screw that I hate Tai Chi that's not cool and I'm with you Shingo screw Birdface <laughs> it's not cool but in this match though Birdface Tai Chi did again earn respect. He's been rest, he's been a lot better the last couple of years anyway. But I still just love ragging on him. But Tai Chi, he wrestled his butt off in his match, and so did Shingo. These guys are beating the living crap out of each other. They're sweating all over the place. There are plenty of times in this match where you didn't think they could even get to their feet, and they were struggling. You could literally see that, that realistically they were struggling to get through this match. Forty minutes of just beating the crap out of each other. Scoring knockouts, both of them scored knockouts, and then it came down to the end of the match where earlier in the match, Kenamaro might have thrown the towel in on Tai Chi, which would have been a fall for Shingo, but he didn't. Uh, the other three guys of just five guys kept him from doing that. But at one point in time, near the end of the match, Tai Chi scores a knockout kick. So basically, Shingo's knocked out, and then he puts him in a submission hold. And he's just cranking and cranking and cranking. And they showed a the camera. Shingo's knocked out. And you just see his head just going back and forth. He, he's done. And Red Shoes is going, hey, you know, Kito, you need to speak or I'm calling the bell. Hiromu hops up on the apron with the towel. And everybody's like, don't throw in the towel. Bushi's like, don't throw in the towel. Naito's, don't throw in the towel. And Hiromu's, you know, Hiromu's so expressive. He's like, ah. And then he throws the towel down. He's like, no, come on, Shingo, get back into it. But Shingo can't. Shingo is knocked out. He's done. And after just Tai Chi just basically looking like he was about to rip Shingo's head off his shoulders, Red Shoes finally calls for the bell. He calls the match. It is Tai Chi who wins three to two. He is the new king of pro wrestling in one of the best matches of the tour, one of the best matches of the year so far. Um, I usually don't suggest Tai Chi matches, but this one you definitely, I, I would suggest you guys watch it. This thing is, it's, a, a war of attrition it is a brutal nasty dirty sweaty down home just i don't care we're just going to kick the crap out of each other for almost 45 minutes kind of a match i loved it uh, after the match tai chi's got a few jokes or whatever but i think this is unless he was never open weight champion which i'm not sure about i think this is tai chi's first singles championship which again is going to the benefit of just five guys both for Sonata and for Tai Chi. They are both now champions in New Japan, um, singles champions in New Japan. And, you know, just five guys is eclipsing LIJ, and that's the storyline. Now, I think this is all leading towards 
possibly at Dominion, Naito and Sonata for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship because Naito's been kind of in the background while Hiromu and Shingo have been really the vocal ones in this rivalry against uh, just five guys. But five guys is taking over. Again, I mentioned, I've mentioned before that I like the way that the factions now, just five guys, Strong Style, TMDK, United Empire, they're all coming to the ring for the matches for their other guys which is something that used to happen a lot more frequently in New Japan. They kind of got away with it with some of the older factions over the last couple of years, but Suzuki Goon is done. LIJ is diminished. Chaos is, I don't even know if Chaos is a faction anymore, who knows? Uh, but you're seeing in Bullet Club, they don't really do that, but you're seeing the other factions and the strength the other factions are having by seconding their guys in these big matches and hopefully that continues to be a trend that happens in new japan pro wrestling so we're going to head to wrestling Nontaku. i will be reviewing that next weekend a bunch of big matches on that show of course again the main event is hiromu the junior heavyweight champion hiromu challenging the world heavyweight champion sonata his former teammate and lij for the title Hiromu's coming in with that busted up knee that Ken Amaro worked over for 30 minutes in their match. So, and it's only six days between the matches. So, Hiromu, I don't think Hiromu's winning the title, obviously, but my God. I would, the, the question is going to be, what is the story they're going to tell in that match? Is Naito going to get upset? Is Sonata going to go too far, given that Hiromu's basically coming into this match injured with an injured leg? How is that going to play out? Is this kind of cold war between the two going to heat up because somebody's going to lose their cool and it's going to get contentious? We're going to have to see about that, but I want to know what you guys think. Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. And until next time, I will see you guys here for more news, rumors, and reviews on the Rant and Review Pro Wrestling. Have a good day.